Hey everybody, welcome back to Church Talk. We're talking about everything involving the local church. I'm with Rob, and today I have some very special guests with me. As you can see, Arian is here once again. <laughs> and guys, we have a really special guest today. Arian's been in contact with Matt McKenzie from Red Rocks Worship, and we have him on a Zoom call that we're going to uh, just be at talking to him a little bit about about Red Rocks and what they're doing and what he's been up to and and just we're just going to have a conversation about worship and so stay tuned and we'll cut right to the video. Guys, this is awesome. Across the across the country, just <laughs> a couple of dudes hanging out. So. Yeah, I honestly was not expecting this. Like, I I didn't think you would do it. If I'm being honest, <laughs> I uh, I try to be pretty pretty responsive to DMs and things. So, just because I I know like, and so many of the people like when I was growing up, um really like the approachability was like tough like people that i like wanted to connect with and like i just i don't know man like in a world where we you know we're in a social media world where you you're one message away from connecting with somebody and someone wants to take the time out of your day to uh, their day to message you i think it warrants a response and at least like a hey you know let's talk yeah. so i'm never i never i never want to be unapproachable because i've had so many people that you know, I've always wanted to connect with be not super approachable. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Man. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah. how's your, how's your day been today? <laughs> uh, it's been, it's been, it's been nuts. Um, honestly, we are, we're in a busy season, um, with Red Rocks worship. So we are, um, getting ready to drop a single on October 4th. Um, so first single off of our new record never gets Sweet. old um which we could definitely talk a little bit about how that song came together it was super awesome so um and then um yeah we're heading out on tour um in november um so it's uh, part two of our good plans tour um and so we're hitting 10 cities on that tour um we are in full church mode at church uh every weekend um, we just did our fall launch as a church, so like groups and volunteer signups, and I've kind of helped architect our our volunteer process as a uh, uh, onboarding process at, at the church for worship. So, um, so I'm busy with that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, we got Dove Awards next week. Um, it's just oh, it wow. never ends. Awesome. We're going we're going to we're going back out to Nashville in mid October. Um, for for some session work with our label um, in Air One, so it's just there ain't gonna be no rest for the wicked until and then we got Christmas like after on the heels of tour, yeah. it's like here we yeah. go, it's Christmas. So we will we talk to me in January one. Maybe I'll maybe I'll find some time to you know take off then. But it's all good. It's all yeah. fun stuff. Man. Christmas is always yeah. fun. <laughs> I know, but tell me about you guys. I know nothing about you. What is our DM conversation? Um, yeah, that's but yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, we kind of went over it a little bit. Like I just moved out here actually okay. last year. So I haven't even been in West Virginia that long. Okay. Um, I moved out here with my uncle. Um, originally the plan was to go into the Marine Corps. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. I don't like talking. About <laughs> but, um, the original plan was to go into the Marine Corps and because, because I didn't want to go to Camp Pendleton. I wanted to be closer to family. Um, sure. I moved here from Indianapolis. Okay. Um, and yeah. so Paris Island's closer. And that that was that was the plan. And then I got with recruiters and they were like, yeah, you can move there. We'll send you your paperwork and all that. You don't have to do redo everything. We'll send it to you. And then when I moved here officially and called them, nobody called me. Everybody wow. goes to me. So it's just like, well... I don't even think I'm interested in doing that anymore. Um, and so around this time, I, I guess you could say I wasn't 
as in the church world as I used to be growing up. Um, Like I grew up in church um, and then just had a a little bit of a falling out. And um, I was like, well, I need to do something. My uncle's like, well, let's, let's get you back in church, man. Let's come to Kings river and, and just, you don't have to do anything. Just come and get to know people and, and just know what genuine love is. Yeah. Um, and so I started going to Kings River, which um, he's still going. And a couple months after that, I had the idea of playing drums. I've always wanted to play drums. Like, okay. I was one yeah. of those kids that started out banging on pots and pans and stuff. So yeah. um, I brought the idea to my uncle. I was like, how would you feel if I like, would it be okay for me to start playing drums here? And um, they use click and guide. So it was like, I'm down. Um, you just have to learn how to play with click and guide before there you we go. Do anything. So um for months I was just practicing with that. And then yeah. a guy by the name of Frank Miller would come to our youth services. They they'd have morning services and then they have a youth service after. And okay. so my uncle was like, Hey, my nephew wants to play drums. Can he play with you? And he was like, As long as he can stay on click, I don't <laughs> and so i ended up doing it and it was it was awesome it was fun um i felt freedom it felt like what i was doing was just right and so after the service he was like why aren't you playing more and i was like well i kind of just i wasn't planning on doing this like long term it was just something to do for fun yeah. um and just just to put something just do something on the side. And so he was like, well, as long as I'm here, I'm going to make sure you're playing. And so it was just uphill from there. I I found myself having a a deeper connection with God and, and just, I never had this much of a connection with God before in my entire life. I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, Let's go, bro. And it's just it, God works in mysterious ways, man. Because like, if you would have told me five years ago, I'd be a worship drummer. I'd be like, bro, you're you're insane. Like, that's not. Yeah. There's no way. So it's just, yeah. it all worked out, and I met these guys, and they basically took me under their wing, um, and our relationship just just took off from there like I, I love these guys a lot yeah. man I'm so blessed to know these guys because like yeah. <laughs> they they treat me like their actual son and it's just like yeah I love it, it yeah. like we've only known each other for a year but it's yeah. almost like we've known each other our entire lives so Let's it's go. just like Let's yeah see. God's good man God's there's good. a running right. joke in the church well it's not a joke in the church but you kind of made it one where he told a lady in the church that a few uh, people yeah i'm i'm their i'm their fourth son actually i think you said second or third son uh, fourth. it was fourth um but uh but she first started she believed him yeah and so i had to tell her like well he's he's more like an adopted son we just adopted him like last year you know <laughs> i felt so bad because like she genuinely genuinely believed me and i'm like they're probably gonna think rob was like married before jennifer <laughs> they're gonna hey bro they're gonna, they're gonna kick him off oh, the team man. like i gotta say something it's <laughs> and it's so, 2024 like, I, people believe anything so yeah dude yeah. and so it's just like and this is when i first started coming around so no one knew who i was Mm-hmm. So it's just, I'm still like trying to fellowship and get to know people and let them know that I'm here. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's another thing I love and respect about Rob. He didn't like immediately threw me in the worship yeah. team be- just because he knew me. He he made it fair. It was like, I, yeah. I kind of want to sit you down for a little bit, let people yeah. know who you are and then yeah. we'll go from there. And so it's just, it's been where we got some fun stuff coming. That's sure. sweet, man. Yeah. What church are y'all at? We're at the the Bridge Church in Poco, West Virginia. Okay, sweet man. Little tiny place that uh, used to be a golf course. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. the church isn't. I mean, the church isn't a large church. Uh, we've we've grown quite a bit. I've been there for about a year now, hmm. uh, but okay. I've known Pastor Mike for several years now. Um, awesome. But the town is so small, and yeah. they're they're. Their football team is called the Dots. 
the polka okay. dots. <laughs> there we crazy. go. Uh, but uh, but the you know, we're we're just outside of you know what maybe ten minutes away from Charleston, West Virginia, maybe fifteen minutes okay. out of there. It's all so close together. Like it's just yeah, it's a weird yeah. layout. There's just a river in between, and there's cities on yeah. the side, basically. So it's wild. Yeah, West Virginia is not a real big place. If you're used to bigger states and bigger cities, we're not very big. <laughs> yeah, my so I was I was born in Virginia Beach. My sister's adopted from West okay, Virginia, cool. Morgantown. So okay, um, yeah. So I'm an East Coast dude at heart. But gotcha. Um, that's, that's just about three hours north of us there. Yeah. 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 Well, we're actually, we're actually going to be, I know it's, it's probably probably about three, three and a half hours away. We're going to be in Bristol, Tennessee on this tour. That That's the closest we're getting to you on this one. So, yeah. yeah. yeah you guys got to come at some point, man. But, but, I know, man. It'll be fun. He knows how to get fun. down. Let's go, yeah. bro. Yeah. Let's go. Um, That'd be great. And That'd be great. Rob, how, how long have you been at the bridge? Uh, I've been at the bridge about a year. Okay. maybe just a hair over a year um before that we kind of we were traveling just kind of in our regional area uh yeah. taking a break from worship leading or worship pastoring for a little while um yeah. but we've been worship pastoring now for probably 15 years maybe oh something like man that. um well let me that, go ahead we let were... me go ahead and uh interview you then because people need to know <laughs> what you have to say yeah <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> but Fifteen years about, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's kind of on and off. I, you know, we've the Lord's almost had us in like startup churches and mm. just different things like that. It seems like so we'd have a season at a startup ministry, and then um, you know we'd we'd go somewhere else and and uh, take a little break and and kind of travel ones. Um, yeah. But but now we're we're like seated, you know. What I mean, we're, we're like find That's a place cool. where we where I believe we're supposed to be, <laughs> you know, not just like a don't know how long we're going to be here type of type of thing. It, it broke my heart when they left Kings River, but <laughs> then it all worked out because I ended up joining with them. But, yeah, uh, there we go. But we weren't we weren't <laughs> pastoring there. We were we were helping yeah. helping his, his uncle James. Uh, we would lead maybe once a month, twice a month, something like that. Yeah. We really weren't because pastoring. Yet. My uncle's actually the worship leader at my old church, so I used <laughs> to. I had the opportunity of doing worship with him, um, and I, like I, I'm very blessed for that. And it gave me the opportunity to meet these guys and like all yeah. these all all kinds of worship leaders across West Virginia. Man, it's it's been a blessing. But I, I have to say, like out of everyone I've met the connection I have with these guys and it's just, it's just, it's real. It's genuine. Cool. It's good. Man. You know what I mean? Like Let's go. I could, their sons, so they have three sons. And okay. so me and their sons are like, we're just That's locked cool. in. We're just That's locked great. in. Man. So it's yeah. just like, I wouldn't want to be on a worship team with anybody else, to be honest with you. Let's go. Well, I can already That's tell, awesome. man, just the camaraderie that you have, but also Rob, the fact that you led with relationship before skill. Yeah um yeah that's like the number one mistake i see churches do it's just like cool you want yeah. to find someone and stick them in your you know right. your square <laughs> your, your 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 wheel over your hamster wheel over here and now they just become a position week in and week right. out it's like people the number one reason people serve in church is because they want community like they want to be yeah. known and they yeah, want and to know others like we were created for so i just love that you led you lead with relationship i can already tell that yeah you know? Um, yeah, and that was oh, when he, when he said he was he called me. He's like, man, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about, I think the Lord's called me to the bridge. I, he's like, I don't want to, I really don't want to leave where I'm at, but I feel like I'm so to be. And so it, you, we had a little talk. And I'm like, whatever, what, whatever you want to do, I'm going to support you. If you stay where you're at, it's great. If you come, where you're more than welcome. And I told him, but, and I know when you come, I know you're a drummer. I know you're a worship drummer. You love to worship on the drums. But you're not going to for a little while because I just want you to come and just Obviously. get to know everybody. Obviously, I and it like that part, man. ended up being <laughs> a little bit quicker than what I I would have done. Our 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 other drummer, he just recently stepped into youth ministry, and uh, so he said, you know, on Wednesday evenings, I'm going to step away from playing drums so I can kind of have all that time and 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 pour pour into the youth. And uh, so it just uh, the timing was just really good that you <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah. stepped in right at the right time so 
Yeah, that's so it worked awesome. out really well. That's um, awesome. But so tell us a little bit about you, man. How long have how long have you been been a drummer? Yeah, so um I have I've been playing drums since I was three years old. Um I'm thirty one. Oh, wow. Um so it's kind of a crazy story. Um, so I'm adopted. Both my sister and I are adopted. Uh, parents couldn't have kids. And I was adopted from birth. So my my parents are all I've ever known. I don't actually know uh, my birth mom or anything. Um, mm -hmm. But the last thing that my birth mom told my parents um, was that, hey, he's going to be some sort of musician. Because um, every time there was music on, um, he kept he kept a beat like there was there was he responded yeah. to music and so um you know it, it's honestly been prophesied over my life from probably from a very very early age um to play That's music awesome. um and so yeah um started playing when i was three got my first kit when i was four i did the whole like pots and pans thing where you know you take them out of your out of mom's That's cupboard great. and i was i was a step further for me because like i would set them up like at different heights, like where the drum kit would actually be. So like the rack yeah. tom, the floor tom, you know, cymbal. My parents, that's where my parents like really just noticed like, hey, like this is different because um, this is set up like a drum kit. And like, then I would st I'd start to listen to music. So I was raised on like Stevie Wonder and like a bunch of old Motown and like oldies music. And um, I'm, my dad's from Barbados. So I've got a lot of like Soul Islander like stuff yeah. in me. So um yeah um raised around music parents took me to the jazz festivals um at an early age in virginia beach um and i would be like fixated on the drummer like the whole time um and uh you know finally started kind of playing fast forward to um when i was 12 i started playing in the youth group in the youth ministry at our church at that point we were living in phoenix arizona so my dad was a pastor so i moved around quite a bit when I was younger. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I guess, you know, even maybe even before we get there, like my dad used to be a worship leader before he was a pastor on staff, like full time. Uh, he was just a, um, one of the worship leaders at the church and we had a load in load out church. It's actually two miles, uh, east of where, uh, my wife and I live now. We were loading into this high school, uh, loading in the load out to this high school. And I was there every Sunday, open load in and load out like i've always been the first That's person enough. to church and the last one to leave um yeah. not much has changed <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, definitely definitely still one of the first people to church maybe maybe the last one to leave not so much anymore but still like, I, the church has always been home for me like it's the it's i love it like just the physical building yeah. but also the people of god and and so yeah um anyways so start playing youth at 12 years old in Phoenix, um, started playing weekends shortly after that. And really just, um, it took off for me at that point. I was also playing sports, but um, it was right around the, the age of 16, 17 when I you know, made a decision. I was like, hey, I'm going to chase this, this music thing down rather than sports. So I laid sports aside um, and just started chasing, chasing drums like full time. So um, yeah, I, uh, I toured for a little bit in a um, in a rock band called uh, Random Hero. Um, so at this point, we were um, moved all the way back up to Denver, and um, that's a, that's a wild story. Um, we were supposed to plant a church in Colorado Springs, and the Lord shut the door on that. Um, so we were supposed to move from the, from Phoenix back to Colorado Springs because we used to live in Denver originally, um, or live live in, live in Colorado originally. And um, yeah, so rug got pulled out from under that. We ended up moving back to Denver um to to take over a church that um we had actually originally helped plant that church where we were loading in loading out um and yeah um kind of got a way more serious about drumming at that point because you know it became more of them just a hobby it was like no like i want to find a way to do this forever so um yeah. and um yeah man i uh so i toured for a little bit when I was like 18 years old, um, about six months in a rock band, did the band life. Um, and that's hard. Um, to be honest, the Lord actually like had to take it away from, take music away from me for a pretty long season. Um, because I was doing it for me. Like at the end of the day, like 
that's the most dangerous part about what we do i think is mm-hmm. hey like you're on a stage you got the lights you're playing a super loud instrument you're kind of the center of attention without mm-hmm. you know it's the the biggest juxtaposition in church is like the fact that the band the worship leaders all sing on stage and they usually got cool clothes on they're they're they got lights and they're playing all these loud instruments yet the Lord is who we're trying to direct attention to. So right. that is a really difficult place to be. And if your soul is not like um, intact at that, then it's really, really hard thing to do with integrity. And I was, I was saying I was doing it for the Lord, but I was really doing it for myself. So I was chasing the yeah. rock star life and it almost yeah. wrecked me, man. So um, the yeah. Lord took it away for a good long while. Um, and um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really get back into playing music professionally until, um, you know, walked along a long road from there, but, um, until probably like three or four years later, um, when I started going to another church in town here in Denver called Flatirons, um, and Flatirons Church is a, you know, awesome church. Um, they, um, they, it was kind of the first place where I felt like someone valued me relationally before my skill. Um, because I came super broken, very jaded. At this point, my dad was actually not a pastor at a church anymore. The church had like, you know, ostracized our family over something really dumb. Yeah. Um, and uh, they fired, <laughs> fired my dad, all sorts Too of bad of reasons. I know so yeah. much of that. It's really sad. Um, and yeah, I was, I hated church. I thought I hated people in church. I didn't hate the Lord. I just hated the organized structure of church. Um, yeah. very jaded. Um, and was just asking myself the question, like, man, like, Lord, if these are your people who claim to love you, then how do they treat people like this? Um, yeah. I don't really want anything to do with that. Um, and yeah, man, um, you know, from, from there, you know, got, I ended up, I remember, I'll, I'll never forget the day because this is a pretty pivotal like moment in my life. Um, I was driving a friend home. Um, there's a town here called Lafayette, which is where the main campus of Flatirons is. And um, I was driving a friend home. He lived, he happened to live in Lafayette. I was driving, like, you know, dropped him off, was going back to my house and um, drove right by the church and um, felt the Holy Spirit just say, hey, you need to go in there um you've been running you've been running for a bit you need to go in there and i'm like lord this is the this is a mega church this is the last place i want to be like these this church has bumper stickers there's no way like (laughs) not going in here like there's no way and you know um thank the lord that i had i strolled in there sat in the back in the very back and the pastor his name's jim um started talking about how the, the church had hurt his family and how um, you know, he had struggled with, um, a various number of things for years and years. It was just probably the most raw and real thing I've ever heard a pastor say. And I was like, is this actually okay? Like, cause I had grown up under the, the, you know, um, presumption that you had to have it all together. Like I was, a I was the pastor's kid. I couldn't like be the yeah. rebel. Like I couldn't, I had to put on a face, like all of that stuff and put a lot of pressure on myself. So I came, you know, I started going to that church um, pretty regularly. I had some other friends that were there at that time. And I figured, you know, like the best way to probably get involved at a big church like this is either start serving or find a group. And I'm really good at music. And I think I want to get back into this. Lord, is it time? Like, so I auditioned for the team. Um, and like I said, they led, they led with relationship because I applied as a very like, um, or auditioned as a very broken individual. And instead of throwing me on platform, um, there's two worship leaders there um, who walked me back to health long before I served. That's awesome. Um, And so, man, I just, I just think it's so important. Um, You never know what people are walking into your team with. um, So lead Mm -hmm. with relationship, like the health of that individual is way more important than whatever skill they could offer you. So, yeah. So, um, so got, so started serving on the worship team. It was actually kind of crazy. The, the, my first weekend up was Christmas, um, of 2017. 
um, or I'm sorry, 2016 at Flatirons. Um, and it was their, their drummer that was supposed to play had like backed out. So like literally a day before rehearsal started. And that's one of those churches where like, there's like three rehearsal days for like a Christmas service. It's like a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. And um, they had called me like the day before re- rehearsal started. Like, Hey, like we don't have any other options. Like, are you available? I wasn't even supposed to start playing on the team until January at that point, but um, got thrown up on Christmas. Um, and yeah. Um, started serving regularly and uh, never really, never really looked back. But the, the important part, um, there was four people, four really, really important people that the Lord are going to connect with us all um, there. Um, so Red Rocks Worship has a band, obviously, um, that's singers and band members. Um, our guitar player, John Meeting, was on staff at Flatirons um, as the youth worship leader. So got connected with him, started serving there. Um, another guy named Zach Hartgraves, um, plays, plays bass for us, um, at Red Rocks. He was also serving at Flatirons. Another guy named Cole Zander, <laughs> who plays electric guitar for us, that also, uh, he plays for Red Rocks. He was serving, playing electric guitar at, um, at <laughs> Flatirons. And then there's me. Um, and we all start playing music together. Um, and that was back in, you know, 20, 26, 27, then 2017. So, um, and, um, most importantly, uh, love those guys, but love this person way more. I met my wife, Flatirons. So, um, so the yeah. Lord, it just like, it just is a good reminder to like, if you feel the Holy Spirit, like nudging you, like you, pr- it's probably a good idea if you obey because <laughs> you don't know yeah. what's on yeah, the other side. <laughs> right. Like, you know, it's like, cool. Right. God rewards obedience. And it's just like, um, he, he does, I don't, if you look at the, if you look at the Bible, it's interesting, like the times that the Lord decided to speak to people, um, it's when they were like, either doing something dumb, not listening. And he had to audibly speak to get their attention. Yeah. Like, Hey, you're running no more. Like Moses yeah. in the burning bush. Like he was literally running yeah. from his calling. Yeah. So hmm. yeah, man. Um, so met, met my wife, uh, my now wife there, um, coincidentally was drumming at the youth retreat and um, cool. actually like slipped and like on the drum riser and like put a giant gash in my leg like down to the bone it was not pleasant and she just oh. happened to be the nurse that was there um at uh the retreat with the youth group and that's how we met so um so most of the good things in my life that the lord has like brought have been because of um drumming and music so um yeah. and yeah you fast forward to today so i'm giving you like my whole history but um you fast forward <laughs> to, <laughs> you fast forward to today um you know i guess you know so obviously i play i play drums for red rocks worship uh, in a full-time capacity i don't just play drums um i also handle all of our marketing um uh, from a glo- on a global scale and then um handle all of our communications like internally. So just putting structure and systems because we have in, in within our worship teams because we have um, a lot of campuses, a lot of volunteers and a lot of moving parts. So yeah. um, just trying to help, you know, serve in that capacity. And the Lord had brought me to Red Rocks, you know, through again, the form of relationships and music. Um, Tyler, Tyler Roberts and Corey Miller. So they're two of our, our worship leaders, um, you know, that, write a lot of the songs and obviously go on the road. Um, I knew them through like mutual friends and had kind of connected over the years on and off. And over COVID, the Lord had um, opened a door to just start like serving at Red Rocks Young Adults, which is the Young Adults Ministry. So at that time, I was, um, you know, still at Flatirons playing on the weekends um, but the Flatirons had killed their young adults ministry, just some, you know, logistical changes and direction and vision of the church. Um, and I was a young adult, obviously at that point, um, and dating, but still a young adult, um, right. in that, in that age range. And so, you know, looking for community and for a place to, to plug in naturally and started going to Red Rocks Young Adults just cause I felt like, um, you know, love Flatirons, like I said, is an amazing church, but um, again, looking for community, also looking for something a little different. Like I, I was like, Lord, I know like that there are different styles of worship and I gravitate more to the ones that allow space to see what the Lord is going to do 
like in the service. Like it's not just song one, yeah. song two, song three, song four. Um, right. And um, Red Rocks is very much that type of church where there, hey, there's a lot of space, especially at like a young adult ministry. Like I've been to a few of their conferences like on and off and just kind of seen it from a distance. Like, man, like these people just love the presence of the Lord. Um, not to say that Flat Earth doesn't, it's just a different style. Um, right. And so that more aligns with, with my heart. So I started serving like once a month down it down at Red Rocks with, with Corey, um, who's again, one of our main songwriters at Red Rocks Worship. And, um, then, you know, COVID happens and, uh, Corey calls me like the week that the world shut down and he's like, Hey dude, we don't, we need to record like eight online services. Cause we don't know if we're going to meet again. Um, <laughs> uh, we, the, this might be the last time ever, but we don't have a drummer cause all of our drummers like work nine to five jobs, like during the week. So they're not free. Um, at that time I was working in real estate, um, doing sales and marketing and coaching. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, what ended up going down, happened to happen to have that day off again, that's not an accident. Um, and right. went down, recorded eight services and, uh, met the rest of the team. And what ended up happening when, you know, we were able to like, um, at least record online services, um, here and there um, was that it, it was kind of funny because um, flat irons had to do the same thing but they have a pretty big staff their worship director played drums so there wasn't really a place for me anymore when covid mm -hmm. happened they would record on some random day but red rocks had a need because they didn't have any drummers they could do it during the week and yeah um and I started doing that every week. We were recorded on Thursdays. It became this thing called WEX. It was, um, you know, that's what it was known as. Um, it was just a, a week, um, a service that we recorded during the week and, and put them up on YouTube. And you can go back and watch those. Like there's you know, all the way back from, from 2020. It's like everyone on staff has a mask on. It's super weird. Yeah. Um, you're singing yeah. <laughs> and you're playing for a camera. It's very different. But what ended up happening was, um, the because it was on thursday um you know the the guys i mentioned before like cole and zach and john um there was also need for like a band for those things and so those guys started coming around because they were all the lord was stirring something in them as well um and we became the band for red rocks church midweek service recording and we did that every thursday um, for the entire, like the half the year of 2020, the entire year of 2021 and 2022, um, yeah. you know, fast forward to the fall of 2021, they ask us to play on the things of heaven album. So that, that album has like songs like living God, echo holy on it. Mm -hmm. And, and so they asked us to play, um, it was an honor to get to do that. Um, shortly after that, you know, Tyler and Corey sit me down and like, Hey, we want you to be the guy like um our drummer for red rocks worship but more importantly we want you to pastor like our drummers here at the church like be the section leader and That's i really cool. wrestled with that because it's like cool you're asking me to like jump in with two feet yeah i'm still like kind of over here at, at flat irons playing on and off so now i'm like got a foot in each camp and at the speed at which yeah. both run in you just can't like do both right um and i right. felt like hey if i'm if i'm doing this i gotta jump in with two feet so at that point, um, you know, my wife, uh, my now wife, and I just prayed about it, and we figured, hey, like, if the Lord has really called me to do this thing, like, this is the open door, like, so right. let's let's make the jump. And shortly after that, so did John, and so did Cole, and so did Zach. Like, we all like migrated over, and that is basically most of the band of Red Rocks Worship. So it's pretty crazy um, how the Lord yeah. is like. But yeah, sorry, I just completely rambled, but. That was no, you're, no, you're good. You're good. That's what, that's what so, you get when you get me. So that, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of, you you were talking about like in the beginning of your career, so to speak, where you, you kind of it was all about you and you were doing yeah. it for yourself and for your. Yeah. So fast forward to now, to where the Lord has you now and the stage that He's given you guys. Yeah. How do you and your team continue to make it about the Lord and to keep the purity in your worship? Yeah, and man. not revert back to that that old mentality of where you come from and yeah. do it for your yourself again how how do you, how do you navigate that 
It'd be so much easier if the Lord just gave us all a formula for doing that, but he doesn't yeah. um, <laughs> cause it's our hearts. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a scripture, um, that says, you know, who can ascend the mountain of God, those with clean hands and pure hearts. Um, yeah. so, um, our team fights and has fought really, really hard, um, to take that verse to heart. Um, clean hands and pure hearts doesn't mean we have to be perfect, but, right. um, like confessing your sins, um, to one another so the Lord can forgive you. Like that's a real thing. Um, mm. so whenever somebody and how that looks practically on our team, like if there's, if there is a night, like I distinctly remember the night on our last tour, uh, the good plan spring tour where we were in Atlanta and we were at a not so like conducive venue. It was like a very like, you know, it was a church in the middle of the city of Atlanta. Um, it was, it looked like a youth room for lack of a better term. Like it was not mm-hmm. our normal place that we play at all. And all of us had a really bad attitude about it. Um, yeah. Like we were like, man, why are we here? Um, and it was, it's funny how the Lord will get your attention. Um, the pastor of that place, his name's Tommy, one of the coolest people I've ever met. Uh, he rides a skateboard. He's got long hair. Like he's, he's like <laughs> such a rad dude. Um, he was like, Hey guys, um, I just want you to know, like, we don't have much to give you, but every, we're going to give you everything we got. And like, I had to like leave the room was instantly reminded, Hey, that, that woman, that woman who came to the temple and gave everything that she had, that is the most costly, like expensive mm-hmm. thing. And she poured it out on the, on the Lord's feet. Like, um, even right. Mary with the perfume at the Lord's feet, like it's going to cost you everything. Yeah. And when the Lord, when the Lord says that, when, when, when he tells us the stories in the Bible, it's, it's because it costs us ourselves, like at the end of the day. And so we were just reminded in Atlanta, man, that, Hey, the Lord doesn't need a really cool venue. Doesn't need a conducive sound system. He can choose to move when and where he wants, and right. it's up to him. But we can we can either partner with what he's already going to do or choose to stand in opposition to it. And I don't know about y'all, but I would rather partner with the Lord a hundred percent of the time. And so right. like that's just a practical example. Like we had to rally as a team and and really just get our hearts right and confess to one another, like, hey, I've been having a bad attitude about this all day because this venue is not like what it what we're used to playing. And what the Lord ended up doing that night was crazy. Um, it was, it's my favorite night on tour this year by far. <laughs> um, it was super sweaty. The AC went out in the middle of the night um, <laughs> and it's Atlanta. So it's humid. Um, yeah. And, but the Lord just literally like was, was delivering people of like, we firmly believe of like addictions and sickness and there was healing happening in the room. There was, he was pouring his spirit out and it was just a really dark reminder y'all that like, again, the Lord's in control. And so it's moments like that. It's like choosing to confess um, and remembering recentering ourselves that Lord, this is about you and this is for you. Um, I think another, right. another practical way we do that um, on tour. Um, so we do this thing called the the worship leader hangout where um, we, we just grassroots network with like local church worship pastors and some of their key team members in each city we're going to. And we invite them out. Um, you know, we, we put them on our guest list for that night. Uh, we invite them out, but we invite them into a room, um, just to do a couple of different things, obviously, you know, facilitate community and connection just in the city we're in. Um, we get to give testimony to what the Lord is doing in that city. And then we pray together for that city. So again, just trying to get in vain of what the Lord's already doing. It's like, you know, when, when Paul, the apostle Paul would go to these different cities, um, and um, he would immediately look for a relationship to find out, like, what's God up to in the city? Like, he'd have to get report from people, mm-hmm. like, what's happening? And then he would he would immediately choose to partner with what the Lord was doing and get in stream. And so, again, just trying to be obedient yeah. to what we read in Scripture, we want to do the same thing. So that's another practical thing that, that we do that, honestly— I would say one of the most important things is the fact that at Red Rocks Church, um, our pastors cover us like crazy. Um, so 
Um, Sean, Pastor Sean Johnson, probably one of the most real dudes I know, has a crazy story, crazy testimony, and talks about it very, very boldly. Um, he's fully behind what we're doing. Um, that's that's a big deal because we're gone sometimes on a weekend when church is happening. Uh, but he's fully behind what we're doing. Um, one of our other pastors is on the executive team, uh, James. Pastor James is a guy that will actually come out on the road with us a lot, and he'll like help facilitate the night. So you can't do this without alignment with leadership either. Like that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, there's pastoral oversight on Red Rocks worship. So, yeah. yeah. Long-winded answer, but there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. That, that's good though. That's that's really good. Um, yeah. You said something a moment ago about uh, sometimes you guys are gone on a Sunday. Yeah. So you guys are going on a Sunday. Do you have like a secondary team that fulfills or in, in when you guys are gone and are they like volunteers or yeah. how does, how does that work when you guys are gone? And then I have another question about the, just the, the, the full-time part yeah. of the band, but the, yeah, but your, your secondary team, are they like volunteers or are they, how, how does, how's all that work when you guys have to be gone? Yeah. Um, so majority is vol is volunteer. Um, and obviously, you know, our, our church has the, you know, our church does stipend some people because of what they bring to the table, like a music director. So we, we function in like a music director format. So we have the worship leaders and the music directors. So the worship leaders are communicating with the MD who's communicating with the band. Um, like that's a big, that's a big deal to be a music director because you're making a session, you're directing the band, you got to know everyone's parts. Like that's a considerable amount of time. And so that's why right. we choose to compensate uh, people like that who are bringing more to the table. Um, there's some other positions, you know, on a case by case basis that will we will pay them because of, again, like they're, they're pastoring people on our team. They're, they're playing in multiple facets. Like we have a lot going at the church. Right. And so um, we want to honor people's time, but the majority is volunteer. Um, and the way we work in our, our, you know, environment, man, is we don't have a midweek rehearsal. Like you got to come yeah. to the weekend knowing your stuff. Um, and so just, it, it elevates yeah. the bar automatically when you do that. And so, with folks right. that, um, that, um, you know, that some folks can't operate in a, in a, in an environment like that. And that's fine. Um, we're, we will develop them until they can, but that's the level of expectation. Um, yeah. And so when we're gone, yeah, the church still has to happen. Like I can think of many times being on the road, um, uh, where somebody on the team is handling something back home from afar. Um, all the way down to like women, our, our, our audio engineer who heads up audio at the church and our production guy on the road, like they're over what happens at the church. So all of us are compensated to make sure stuff are, is happening at the church. Like that's our full-time job. So we got to do our jobs and be out on the road. And sometimes that can be tough, but, um, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, we, we do plan pretty far in advance. Like we know six months, seven months, eight months ahead of time, if we're going to be out so we can like like hold it down and our, our team, what right. you see on the road, like there's, there's another worship leader at every campus um, other than just the ones on, on the road. So we have a pretty deep, like, you know, staff that can step up and handle those things. So it takes a village, man. Um, it really does. Um, yeah. So yeah. How many campuses cool. do you guys have right now? In Denver four, one in Austin, <laughs> Texas. Um, and then we have a campus um, in Brussels, Belgium, overseas. Um, and then we partner, we have, we have some God behind bars campuses. So there's three of those in, in prisons. We count those as, as campuses because every once in a while we'll actually go out and do live worship yeah. there. So, um, cool. yeah. So oh, on, on your all's campuses, how do you, how do you, uh, how's that structured? Do you, do you guys have like their, their own worship team that, gives like a, a, you know, live worship. And then, uh, you, your pastor preaches to them through like, through like this, through zoom, or do they like have their own, everything is like a, yeah. another church. It's just kind of underneath of your all's church. How, how do you yeah. guys structure that to make it work? So I've seen it for sure in ways that don't work. So I yeah. want to know how does it actually work? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it's a moving target for sure. So yeah, we, we, broadcast from one location every weekend um so that's our littleton location um 
and uh, the other campuses will get a streamed message and then live worship. So every campus is a live worship, fully stacked live worship team. So four to five worship leaders, um, two electric guitar players, drums, bass, keys. One of those band members is the MD. Um, and yeah, um, full production team. So um, that's at every campus too. So it's, that's why when I said it's, it's a big operation, it is a big operation. So it takes about 75 people to pull, a team of 75 people to pull off of service um, across all of our campuses at every position. So, wow. um, you guys looking to expand even more or are you, are you done or? I don't know, man. It's, it's where the, if, if the Lord, if the Lord leads us to do that, like I know there's been talks about it, but nothing really official. Um, Red Rocks is everything out of relationship, which I actually really like. I don't try to force it. So, um, but yeah, I would, I would hope that we plant more churches because there's plenty of people that need to hear about Jesus. So, Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. Well, you kind of, some of the questions that I had, um, down, you, already answered a couple of them. Yeah. But, uh, so I was going, I was going to ask you like, are you, are you still on a volunteer basis or are you full-time now? Or, or if you're, if you are a volunteer, what's, what's that look like with the size yeah. of your all's ministry? And, yeah. and so you kind of, you kind of covered that. Um, yep. but those who, who are volunteering with you guys, yeah. um, how does, how's that look with your all size? Cause one, once you yeah. get to a certain point, it's, it's kind of, I don't know if it becomes more difficult, but I know the, the level of excellence seems to, the bar seems to be raised the bigger the church gets, I think. Um, yeah. Cause it seems like if you have a, if I don't mean to sound mean or sound bad with this, but yeah. if you have a church of like 30 people, the pool of the talent that you have, you don't have a big pool to pull from. Yeah. You know what I mean? You may have a, some super talented people there, but that's not on the average. That's, that's, but then when you get to the point of, you know, hundreds or a thousand, the, the talent pool and the anointing pool is a yep. lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so for, for those who are, who are volunteers, that's uh, on your all staff. Well, not staffed, but yeah. Volunteer uh, team members. Um, what's that, what's that look like for them? I mean, if they're, if they're working a nine to five job, um, yeah. you know, or is there, you said you don't have midweek rehearsals, but what's the common Sunday morning for a volunteer look like for, for you guys? Yeah, it's great. Um, well, let me, and, and start during the week, you know, us as a staff, we fight really, really hard to get our songs up on planning center by Tuesday. So like the songs for this weekend will be up by Tuesday. Um, and then all of us as, as section leaders have like group chats with all of our different instrument sections. And as soon as it's posted, um, we will be, te- we'll be messaging the the folks that are on um, for that weekend. But Hey guys, the set is up. Here are some things to note. Um, I'll usually send a video text to the the drummers that are playing and, and just, just kind of break down some things. Like we just did goodbye yesterday, this past weekend. Um by elevation by them and i was like that's <laughs> such a cool song um and i texted all the drummers on i knew we were going to do that song like two weeks before it was on the set and i'd literally sent every single drummer at the church like hey we're adding a new song into our rotation go learn this mm-hmm. um and if you need rehearsal tracks if you want a session let me know i'll get it to you um because most of our guys are, are pretty ableton savvy savvy they have some sort of daw that they're mm-hmm. you know playing in so or practicing with um but even if they're not you put everything up on on planning center um so yeah for stuff like that we just try to be in really really good communication with our people because you got to think the average volunteer right nine to five job they're probably not touching that stuff until friday night at the earliest um Mm -hmm. on an average and so um we have we actually have saturday and sunday services at our church we have a five o'clock on saturday and then three on sunday Um, so what the average, you know, Saturday, Sunday will look like, um, and we actually have, we'll have sometimes at different campuses, we'll have different bands from Saturday to Sunday too. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, yeah. Um, and so for a typical, a typical like service day, um, let's just take, you said Sunday. So Sunday, the band will get there 6.30 for services at eight. So we have an hour 
to rehearse, which is why a rehearsal is not a time to learn the song. It's a time to come and gel it together mm-hmm. as a band. Um, right. So we get the tracks and everything out so early in advance that it's like, hey, like you have them from Tuesday till Saturday to sit down for 30, 45 minutes. It's all it takes, really, to right. learn these songs. And a lot of these are a catalog, so they come back up and around a lot. And so our team knows mm-hmm. how to play them, which is why – if you're right. if you want if you want to take it to the next level as a volunteer at a church, ask your worship pastor for a catalog of all the songs, and learn them, every yeah. single one. Um, if you're really trying to steward that, you know, gifting, like learn them. Um, what I do when I approach like That's goodbye good. yesterday, like this is how I practice. Um, our, our guitar player John and I just did a breakout session at a, a worship conference we were at on this. Um, and this is how I practice. So I will, um, I'll listen to the song, so I'm blue in the face, um, multiple times just as I'm going out throughout my day. And then when I sit down to play it, I will play with the track and a click. Um, and then I will then take the track out and just play with the click and play the parts verbatim. And if, if I can do that, then I know I've learned the song. So, um, if I could just have the click and the guide, great. Like, I know what verse one groove is versus chorus two groove. Like I'm good. Um, so that's pretty hardcore, but that's how I've like learned songs over the years. And I've just learned to get whenever I volunteer, if I'm volunteering in a new place, like I did this at Flatirons when I started playing there, like, Hey, what's the catalog of songs? And I'm going to go learn every single one of them. Um, I also listen to a lot of worship music. So like naturally just know kind of different things. And then there's, right. I think a lot of our volunteers, man, like that, they can carry the mantle. They have years and years and years and years of rich history with their instrument. And so mm. it's kind of like, kind of like a language. If you, you and I, we're all speaking English because we've mm. spoken it our whole lives. Music is a language. Right. And if you speak right. it for a very long time, you can, you can just, it flows naturally. So there's just a lot of, yeah. a lot of that. There's a lot of natural anointing and gifting on our team um we really lean into it um so yeah um but that yeah so there'll be her rehearsal in the first service um is at eight um on sunday second service is at 10 third service is at noon it's typically done by 1 15 um so it's a big commitments after sunday um if you're playing saturday and sunday it's you know saturday rehearsals at three services at five it's done by about 6 15 so I mean, it's, it's the better part of your weekend. So people are like really yeah. bought in because they want to be there. Um, right. And it, that is their community. Like, um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's just a different, it's a different level for sure. But at the end of the day, I just think, man, if it, I, I just go back to scripture. So like David, when he built the temple mm-hmm. uh, yeah. or when, or, or when in the temple of the Lord in, in the city, um, he had people that wanted to be musicians in the church apprentice for 13 years before they were ever right. given the mantle of leading worship in like right. quote unquote service. So I just think like it's so important um, on a on a on a platform such as worship leading, where again you're the one standing there, but you're trying to give attention to the Lord that it is done with excellence. Um, it is done with us authenticity. We have this saying on our on our team that excellence is authenticity. Like we want to play like us, like how we speak on an instrument, um, and because that worships the Lord. Like don't offer up somebody else's offering. Um, like offer up right. you know, what the Lord has given you, but do that in such a way where it's excellent. Like that can glorify Him as well. So, right. Yeah, it's a big deal for sure. Right. Right. For sure. For sure. With with your old tracks and stuff, with you, uh, when you, if you guys are going to do somebody else's song, you're going to cover a song. Do you all ever, do you do it like exactly as it's written, or do you change it up and kind of make it your own style? And then with that, how do you, I mean, do you have to go on, um, you know, Ableton or whatever and kind of track that out yourself to yeah. where your drummers and your people can learn the differences? 
in case they're they're listening to elevation but you're going to do it a different yeah. style or different way yeah and then they get there and like well i learned elevations parts but yeah now it's different parts how how does that work with you guys when you do cover someone else's song and you and you change it up great great question um so uh, multitracks.com is an amazing resource um if you i'm assuming that's probably where you guys get most of your tracks um so we we are <laughs> okay well there you go it's great um <laughs> then you it's actually easier if you don't do that um but for rehearsal mixes rehearsal tracks things like that we're using multi-tracks so um mm. we download the song from multi-tracks our our lead md uh spooky scott will like cut it up if we're doing a shortened arrangement and he'll make sure that all that stuff's accurate in pco planning center to get out to to people um the various campuses during the week so um, that would be like your md or your audio yeah guy. i would that is that is kind of mix it up yeah. to way yeah to the to way you guys want to plan to do it and then yeah yep. yeah and gotcha. we and because we use ableton um and scott i mean scott you should y'all should have scott on this podcast honestly and you can nerd out with you on on ableton and all that stuff and creating space because we do flow quite a bit in our church uh maybe mm -hmm. not on every song but there's usually a song or two where they're there's going to be some like, hey, we're going to come down on this section or we're going to go into this thing and we're not sure what's going to happen. And so there's a lot of looping back to yeah. chorus, looping back to verse, looping back to bridge. And we we build our sessions in such a way that allows for that. Like, you know, Scott uses a most of our MDs use a like a push pad um, to cue a mm -hmm. section of the song. And so there's a lot of easy. We make it very easy to like go back. Um, gotcha. And so, again, that that's all the more important that our musicians need to know like right. the roadmap of the song. So, right. um, because right. you can't do stuff like that if you don't know it. So, um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But for sure, for sure. That's something where, where you come from, <laughs> yeah. James, yeah. uh, was, was talking about that and, and they, he normally pro you know, programs it in and they may get to a certain point in the song and he'll look over at the drummer and just say, just turn the track off yeah. so they can, they can flow. Uh, Cause they don't have somebody that's, that's there. That's going to roadmap it in real time, you know? So, um, so for, for them, uh, that's, that's basically what it looked like. We never yeah. really, when I was there, we never really had a genuine music director. It was, the drummer was basically the music director because the drummer was yeah. the only one with the talk back. So yeah. like, <laughs> For sure. so like if we, if me or he, I call him my mentor, um, but he, he's also my yeah. best friend. Um, Jacob, he was the other drummer at Kings river. And so like, if he felt something or if I felt something while we were playing, we would usually just say something in the talk back or my uncle would just look over and just like, Hey, cut tracks. Like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, follow the Holy spirit and then go from there. So, and I always love those moments. Yeah. I always love it because I could always tell when the, when the track would end Yeah, uh, because something would, there would just be a change in the, in the music just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, not so much like something disappeared or something got better or whatever. It was just, you could just tell there began to be a flow. Uh, yeah. And, and I always, th those are like the, my favorite parts of, yeah like what you're saying about just, just the giving space for the Holy spirit to say something, um, either through a worship leader or not even through any vocals, just mm. playing for the Lord. We do that. I'm, I'm trying to do that even more now, but take our, our congregation into a time to where they're not being prompted to yeah. do anything or to sing anything, mm. but we're just playing before the Lord. Yes. And because it's not about the congregation, it's about the Lord and it's about the congregation and, and us coming together to worship the Lord. And so I'm trying to give more space that isn't, uh, mm. I don't want to say not planned out, but, it, but it's not, uh, there's just more space for the, for the Lord to speak to, to whomever, whether it's somebody in the congregation that, that is just, they're just worshiping. Yeah. So many times we we hear worship pastors and worship leaders talk about, you know, this isn't your personal time of worship, but it really is. It's like we are entering into the presence of the Lord also. Come on. 
Yeah. And it affects us just as it does the person who hasn't been in his presence all week long. And right. maybe we've been in his presence all week and we are ready to go again. And every time we do, it's like, I'm affected by the presence of the Lord, yeah. no matter what day it is. <laughs> no For matter sure. if it's my responsibility or my obligation to, to lead people in, um, yeah. or to, you know, to lead people or not. Um, yep. so, yeah. so, so yeah, I, I try to, I'm trying to give more space now to where we can just play, let the musician just play and, yeah. and let the people just sing whatever's on their heart. That's yeah. not like some lyric on the screen. Uh, yeah. And all these things are good. I think they're all great things and great tools, but, right. but yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's where we're at right now. And, and just given that's that space. So and, sweet, man. Don't, don't ever leave that because I hear worship leaders say that all the time. Like, Oh, this isn't our personal like space to worship. We're not trying to help other people do that. And I'm like, excuse me. Like, right. Like, so you want to lead some people up to a place where you don't want to go yourself. Let me know how that's right. going to work. Like, yeah. you know, um, yeah. like <laughs> our job as worship leaders is to love on the Lord is to bless the Lord and let right. him do everything else. Um, yeah. That is our only job, which I think is this really beautiful place y'all of like, if that's all that is required of you in that moment, then you don't have to perform. Right. You don't have to like worry about the perception of others. Um, you don't have right. to, um, you don't have to be in control of what's going on. You can just simply, Hey, I'm, I want to bless the Lord, whatever that looks like. And just know that like, again, going back to scripture, like when David danced, undignified before the Lord, there were people who didn't yeah. like it because it wasn't normal. Yep. Right. Right. And right. that's okay. Because if I've, and I said, I say this to people all the time, I've seen the Lord and I refuse to not like play yeah. as passionately I, as I do. It's, it's not a show for me. It's a right. real thing. Right? right. Um, Like I've seen the Lord and I just refuse to not bless him, to not choose to bless him, to not pour everything I have right. at his feet. Um, when right. people see that, like they either have to like, oh, like either that draws them in or they're turned off by it. But the freeing thing as, you know, we don't have to be someone's Holy Spirit. That's between them and the Lord. Our job is to bless right. the Lord. So when we can like <laughs> occupy that position, it's actually a position of it's of like blessing from the Lord himself of just like, hey, let me do the work. You just, yeah. you, you just bless me. Like right. um, the pressure's off, man. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah. I love it, man. I just never leave that place. That's, that's true. That's like, that's like worship. That's what it was meant to, meant to be. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. And I've like, I've always had this saying, I've come to realize over the past year, cause I mean, I haven't done it as long as you guys, but somebody, you never know what somebody's going through behind yeah. closed doors you just yeah. see them right, right there in the congregation so the strum of a string the voice of someone the drum the beat of a drum it can change their life yeah like in a matter of a second it can change their life and so it's just like i think that's where we have to keep it genuine and pure ourselves yes because that that's the way how we can reach yep. reach the congregation you know yeah and it's just you can't really do that if you're making it about yourself you know you, I mean? you really can't <laughs> and, at, and at the end of the day um the lord can use what was meant for evil for good um so that's mm -hmm. the that's the cool part is it's like it's his presence it's his church um he's going to he's going to use those things and do the things that he wants to uh, with or without you um i think the choice again is as worship leaders is we can partner with what he wants to do. Um, we can bless his heart or we can stand in the way of that and good luck. Um, done right. that way too much in my life and it hasn't served me. So, um, yeah. um <laughs> you and me both, it, man. It, it, it hurts. It does it's not fun to, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Matt, I appreciate you coming on yeah, this man. evening, giving us some of your time and all right, man. It's good to meet y'all.
Stay in touch. Do, Seriously. All right, man. I'll, I'll, I'd love to love to get you guys sometime to come up to the bridge and yeah. uh, do a, do some worship with us. If you're ever in the West Virginia area, yeah. if you're going to be passing through and you got some time, yeah. uh, shoot me an email or shoot Arian a message yeah. or something, and we'll we'll see if we can yeah. get something yeah. together. Yeah, man, that'd be super cool. I'm sure this so. won't be our last time. I'll probably no. ask you to do something else with me or something. Cool. All right. Cool, man. Yeah. We're trying well, to bug you too much there. Right? Hey, no, man. This is a blessing to do this and, and just get to know you guys. So um, yeah. awesome, y'all. Have a good rest of your night. And uh, thanks for having right. me. You too, man. So, you too, man. Yeah. God bless. Bye. Bye. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video, enjoyed uh, Matt. And uh, if this is the type of content that you guys like, make sure that you hit the like button and the subscribe and share this video with a worship leader friend of yours or just a pastor or whomever. Uh, but anybody that, we, that you think would get any value out of this, make sure you share it with them. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Church Talk. God bless.